Okay, this is part two. This is a follow-up to the uh, video I uploaded last night. I went ahead and made 30 more cardboard bases today, and it only took a couple hours, uh, all told. I took some breaks in between. Very little tweaking was required for this batch. So now all of my uh, Pittsburgh Steelers have bases beneath them. You know, some of the home team has some ITZ bases and some total team control bases that have been pr professionally tweaked. Uh, the, the practice squad, I guess, the reserves have the uh, cardboard bases, but the away team, uh, entirely cardboard bases now. And, uh, of course, I've also got the same scenario with the Bears over there. A lot of ITZs and TTCs, but uh, the remainder are now based up, and my little volunteer squad is also based up. But I would normally uh, set these, let them stand on their bases at least overnight before I did uh, the final evaluation. And I, Final is not the right word. Preliminary is probably the best word, but let's just go ahead and get started. I've got number 53 already up on a on the field here Nice performance. I'm not concerned whether they make it all the way downfield on this test Really nice performance. Okay, here's number 12. It's a quarterback figure uh, mean 13 Expected him to fall over, he did not, but he did deviate over there where the motor is most uh, vibratory. I don't think I just made up a word. I believe vibratory is the correct word. At, at any rate, it's all right. He's got a loop built into him, but we've mitigated that by sliding him over on the, uh, the base plate just a little. And he still didn't fall over there. Very good. All right, moving on. Now here is number 52. This is a linebacker figure. Another impressive result. I feel like this batch, this second half of these uh, away team Steelers figures may be a little better than the first half. But often I say things like that and then go back and check the first ones and they'll be fine. Now this is not a Tudor figure. This is a uh, uh, one of the figures I that was donated to this channel, a uh, real nice figure. I've restored it and done, done some paint touch up on it. It's 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 Donnie Shell, and uh, I really dig this figure. It is heavier than um, uh, Tudor figures, so which means it's even with you know I put the poster pony on it for consistency. It's going to put a little more weight on these prongs, which might make it a little slower. But let's see how he performs here. <laughs> Well, not remarkable for speed, but he's running quite well. And sometimes I prefer that over speed. Let's see how he does throughout the hot spots here. I would be surprised if this figure falls over. He just rushed right through it. All right on. Stayed in bounds there, too. Well, I guess that's open interpretation. Looks to me like he's in bounds. We'll go by the prong. We'll do a slight pivot, see if he stays inbounds the rest of the way. Well, that's very, very, very troublesome right there. There's just so very little vibration there. The motor is right here. It's vibrating the hell out of this side of the field. It's barely moving this side of the field. I can't explain that. No, one, Neither can anyone else. Everyone asks about that, just say, yep, welcome to electric football. So I kind of promised I wouldn't rant about that, but when, you know, it, it, when it impacts... What I'm trying to do here, then, then I, I feel compelled to say something about it. I paid a hundred dollars for this thing, and it's beginning to really annoy me that it doesn't perform any better than it does. All right, here is number ten. This is a either a kicker or a punter. Base is performing fine. It does have a loop built into it, which is why I've got him scooted over to compensate for that. Okay, moving on. Here's number 36, either a running back or a cornerback, possibly both. Just a little faster than any of the others we've looked at so far. That's why he's on a, a skill player base. Or a figure. Alright, pretty good, pretty good. Here's number 94, obviously a lineman. He almost fell over on step off there. Oh my, 
high. That's not what you want. Okay, well, sort of a problematic bass, which is why it went on a lineman. All the lineman has to do is uh, either uh, push the line of scrimmage closer to the quarterback or prevent the line of scrimmage from being pushed closer to the quarterback. Uh, very rarely would a lineman make a tackle anyway. Usually the lineman is blocked and cannot pivot. It's not always true, but um, this is not the best base of the batch. All right, but it's still adequate. It still goes forward, which is more than can be said for a lot of uh, newbie bases. Let's move on. Now here's number 51. Uh, that's the center. If that didn't have a loop in it, I would, uh, I'd be, in fact, it's going the wrong way, isn't it? Let's try again. I've just adjusted the figure on the base. There we go. Okay. But as you can see, it slowed it down a little bit. When you, when you pivot the player on the base a little, it can clear up the deviations, but it can also slow down uh, the base. That's, a. Uh, that's an observed phenomenon. That's actually really, really, really good performance for a center uh, because I typically put slow, piddly bases beneath the centers, but that's pretty good. Number 28, uh, this is a safety. Yeah, that's quite good. I can mitigate a little of that loop. That, that's not even a loop, that's just a deviation. A little bouncy, maybe a little unstable, but a good performer. Here's number 43, it's a running back or a cornerback. Yes, sir. Match that cornerback against a, a fast wide receiver. business but now here's the issue now again we're going back to this problematic section of my field now, if he does that then it's a touchdown for the uh, defense for the offense and uh now i can just sit here for the next 30 minutes and, and it's going to fall over every time right there and uh that's becoming a uh well, it's becoming more and more problematic, even with ITZ bases. And, uh, well, God almighty. Okay, if it happens one more time, I was about to say I'm going to go get the ball peen hammer and just do away with this field, but that would be stupid because I cannot afford to replace it. Just going to have to learn to live with it. And, uh, that sucks. Okay. Meanwhile, the base is, is really nice, and uh, this base costs uh, less than a nickel to produce. Now, here's number 38. It's a, a running back or a, a cornerback figure. Now, that one has a, a very wide loop in it, but we can live with that. We can work with that. We can make use of that. If I just turn him slightly this way... If you can get through the offensive line, or the, the line, you know, offensive and defensive line, uh, it's a nice little uh, uh, curled route there. All right. Here's number one. This is a special teams, either a kicker, a punter, or maybe a, a kickoff specialist, or even a quarterback. Here we go. Yeah, now this is closer to some of the bases I made uh, a few days ago. Um, very bouncy. Very uh, unstable, very jittery, and I couldn't tell you why. It's, you know, just happens with some of these. I don't think it's the material itself so much as it might be uh, the angle and curl of the prongs. That has to be what it is. Okay. Well, a kicker or a punter is not on the team for their uh, speedy running. They're... They're on the team for their, their, their ability to kick, so I'm not too concerned that it's not maybe up to snuff with some of these other bases. Let's move on. 
Here's number eight, uh, 89, a tight end figure. You could also use this for a running back or a wide receiver. <laughs> Just not going to even try to mention this anymore. When they fall there, they're falling over there because of the game board, not because of the bases. Okay. All right. And uh, just for luck, here go to the 50 at least. Yeah, that's a good tight end figure. Most of the figures from the last batch were backer shaped figures or lineman shaped figures. So now we're moving on to some of the what should be faster figures. Uh, with, you know, faster bases. Here's the number 41. Well, at least he made it to the uh, end zone before he fell. And I think uh, when they're falling in the end zone, they're actually tripping over the sticker here, the vinyl sticker, uh, you know, the Steelers sticker here. That's, that's what I think might be happening. Um, hardly ever happens with plastic bases, but that's something to keep in mind if you've got a vinyl on your field. <laughs> Some slow down there, but I'm starting to get used to that. Let's move on. Here's number 16, a quarterback figure. Yeah, I specifically left this one as is after I produced it because of that nice straight route it was running. I could try to improve the speed on this a little, but I could affect the route. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with... Pretty pleased with the momentum and the movement on this figure. Number 37, one of the runner style figures. Mm. I'm not too pleased with this one. A lot of bounciness, not very fast. It's got a loop in it, obviously, because of the way I've got it on the base. And of course, there's this invisible tripwire on my 20 yard line over here. Uh, we need to look at this one some more. Uh, there's a few like this, especially from the previous batch. But I think this is caused by a disparity in the length or the height of the front and rear prongs. But then it's just going to lean up or down if that's the case. That shouldn't really cause bounciness. Uh, so I'm I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> know is that when they bounce like that they're more prone to fall over let's move on might need to replace this base or swap it out with another here's number 84 a mean 13 tied in now we saw this one on that really incredibly fast uh card stock actually it was index card prongs that i uploaded the other night and that was a very short uh, six second video or however long it was now here he is on a cardboard base <laughs> Nowhere near as fast, but nice route and pretty speedy for a cardboard prongs base. I think there's something about the pose of this figure that makes them very good for a fast base. Um, that's just a, a theory, but uh, that's, you know, so far, every time I put this on a base, it's performed well, as opposed to some that wide receiver of Mean 13 figure. Let's move on. This is number 13, a wide receiver figure. That's what you want to see. That's a good base right there. Now, can it get through the gauntlet? Well, I don't know. Uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, it's going to deviate before it even reaches it. Let's come from this way. See what happens. He's doing okay. Bouncing, certainly, but he's making it through. If I sit here long enough, it will fall over. So, very pleased with this base. Number 24 is a uh, running back or a cornerback. That's nice. Kind of slowed down at the end, but nice straight route. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. Okay, number 29 here is a safety. And now he didn't have this loop earlier, but we can mitigate that very quickly here in just a moment if he continues to do it. Just lost a, a little battery power, so watch. I can just slide him over beneath that poster putty on there. 
and uh, that may be too much. He might start looping to the left. So. Oh. Actually, it seems to have made it worse, didn't it? That's curious. Well, yep. slowed him down too. That's unfortunate. Okay, need to move on here. Still a pretty good base. Okay, number 42 is a tight end. And I hope this is a strong base so it can block on the line if I need it to. I haven't tested that yet. But it's a good performer. This is number 34, a running back and or a cornerback. Yeah, now I remember this one has such a terrible loop in and I'm having to really... Uh, Push him out to the side. This is not a, a this is not a great base. Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna swap this out with a if the cardstock bases work with these. I'm gonna swap this one out with that. Still got nine more here, so let's gab more more run. Number forty eight, uh, another tight end. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, very good. Number 35, cornerback or halfback. And yeah, make that fullback. That's awfully slow. I think I should swap this one out with one of the quicker uh, linebacker or lineman figures. Speaking of which, number 66. Yeah, there it is. There's the candidate right there. I just need to switch out those two and it'll be all uh, bed of roses. Okay, very good. Number 70, another lineman. Yeah, I suppose I put him on this base because I, I couldn't eliminate the loop. Number 18 is a wide receiver. Uh, yeah, I couldn't eliminate the loop in that base. I'll probably swap this one out for a cardstock prong base. I'll talk more about that if there's time. Number 27 is a safety. And that's awfully slow. Again, probably... It's okay, but I'll probably swap this out for a quicker base if I can find one. Number 47, cornerback or running back. Yeah, this is another one. I had to compromise between performance, speed, and uh, route. It's a pretty good base, though. Number 14, a wide receiver. He's actually running a little better than he was a while ago. That's cool. Again, I think leaving these on their prongs for a while kind of settles in their tweak. Yep, I can work with that. Finally, number 17, another wide receiver. And if I remember correctly, I wasn't very happy with his base. Yeah, that's piddly. I'd rather put that on a lineman, if I'm honest. So we'll swap that out with a, a faster base from this test. Still pretty good. Now, uh, with the time that's left, uh, a mixed bag. Some of these perform really great. Some of them don't. And that's the way it's always going to be, folks. You know, there's a lot from that batch I, I uploaded, you know, the, the video a couple uh, last night. I wasn't incredibly pleased with, but I guarantee when I go back and watch the, the video and compare it to this one, uh, we'll, we'll have comparable results. I think what viewers and myself need to constantly remind ourselves is that these are not ITZ bases. These will never perform as well as ITZ bases. We can get close to the speed with these cardstock pronged bases, but you know, still lag behind just a little. Still, you have to admit, that's pretty nice. So what I plan to do is make a bunch of these and just try to start integrating them into the cardboard pronged uh, bases as well and try to see if these will perform well together see if I can play the game uh, with uh, a mix and match of both um, 
I'm skeptical because I'm worried that the durability of these won't be as high as on the cardboard bases, which means I'll have to replace these more often. Of course, I can't put weight on these or it just slows them down to the same speed as, as the cardboard bases or less without the durability of cardboard. So it's a trade-off and we're just going to experiment on that. I'm just going to make a batch with unpainted figures on top for now because I'm still, I'm still working on this next batch of figures as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Have a great night.